Fashion is more than the clothes that you wear. Throughout history, fashion has been used to convey who you are and is a window into the lives of those in the past. More than just a form of self-expression, fashion has such a strong influence on us that it can shape the world. With those passionate about solar punk demanding a better future, one way we can look to do this is through our clothes. Solar punk, since its inception, has been a movement that has sought to marry aesthetics and sustainability, with heavy influences from imagery such as Art Nouveau, the arts and crafts movement, and regional motifs, it is easy to see why this aesthetically pleasing movement would lead to inspiring fashion choices. As such, this video will be exploring where we currently are with solar punk fashion, as it is still an evolving movement. Solar punk is rooted in slow, sustainable fashion. As such, when it comes to fashion, there isn't going to be a definitive look, but there are a lot of elements to be played with. Regional influences are essential as it is important to celebrate the individuality of different cultures. We're going to be breaking down why this is important, the influencing aesthetics, looking at examples of what other creators have made, and then last, I'll be showing you a few examples of my own solar punk outfits. Why it is important. Often dismissed as vapid or excessive, this overlooked aspect of our lives is something that we deal with every day. Whether you acknowledge it or not, you still choose an outfit for yourself based on your mood, the occasion, and several other influencing factors. According to the publication, The Source, at Washington University, as of 2019, approximately 85% of clothing that Americans alone consumed were sent to the landfill. Fast fashion leads to solid waste pollution, water pollution, and unsafe environments for workers. However, fast fashion is a relatively new form of industry. The manufacturing model, referred to as quick response, was developed in the US in the 1980s and was developed into fast fashion by the 1990s and early 2000s. Before fast fashion, the textile industry was significantly slower. While the build-up to fast fashion was initiated by the Industrial Revolution, a significantly smaller amount of clothing was made per person. Textiles are labor-intensive, and their cost reflected that. With Solarpunk looking at an ethical and sustainable future, clothing choices would show that. Returning to slow fashion means less clothing, but trading that in for artisanal-made styles to support local industry with more environmentally conscious fabrics and dyes. In short, quality and sustainability over volume. Another ethical choice would be thrifting for outfits or repairing your clothes, but at the end of the day, if you're looking to adapt to a solar punk style, incorporating the ethical attitude towards clothing is essential. And with that, let's get into aesthetics. Influencing aesthetics. There is one reoccurring influence that comes into all these aesthetics, and that is biophilic design, aka the love of nature and design. Whether this comes through in form or presentation, the ever-present connection to nature that is in all of us comes through in these styles. The aesthetics that have had strong influences with solar punk are Art Nouveau, the arts and crafts movement, the work of Miyazaki, and regional motifs such as Afrofuturism, Amazofuturism, and many more. Starting with Art Nouveau, the movement that was the start of graphic design, the style is characterized by natural forms and structures, particularly the curved lines of plants and flowers and whiplash forms. Other defining characteristics of Art Nouveau were a sense of dynamism and movement, often given by asymmetry and by curving lines. Other visuals included vibrant colors such as greens, browns, yellows and gold, feminine figures, hand lettering, Plants such as cyclamen, iris, orchid, thistle, mistletoe, holly, and water lily. Animals such as swans, peacocks, dragonflies, and butterflies, along with whiplash curves, asymmetrical curved lines in an S shape, frequently incorporated into natural forms such as women's hair and the stems of plants. 
These motifs have been used by artists to portray some pieces of solar punk clothing, which we'll get more into with our examples. Art Nouveau fashion crossed over with other trends of Edwardian styles to integrate certain elements and methods of quality craftsmanship. One of the strongest pillars of Art Nouveau ethos was to make art functional and to make functional pieces into artwork. This idea can be carried across into solar punk fashion with the idea of turning your everyday clothes into something beautiful and personal. This way, you are more likely to choose to repair your clothes rather than just throwing them away and replacing them. While Art Nouveau focused on heightening the drama with the forms of nature, conversely, the arts and crafts movement simplified them. Both movements were a reaction towards the Industrial Revolution. The arts and craft movement started in the decorative and fine arts world, where artisans and artists drew not only from folk styles, but also from medieval architecture, where it was promoted as a model for honest craftsmanship and quality materials. Natural shapes and forms permeate the work of designers such as William Morris, Arthur Hagee, Mark Murdo, and those who were inspired by the movement. Supporting traditional handmade production was a central arts and crafts principle. Many advocates of the movement collaborated with rural workers to produce, for example, handwoven rugs or rush seat ladder back chairs. Similarly, solar punks could choose to work with local tailors and other textile workers to create futuristic, sustainable clothing that reflects folk styles to emulate this. Soft painterly backgrounds with simplified yet expressive characters define Miyazaki's work in movies such as Howl's Moving Castle, Nausicaa of the Valley of the Wind, and Kiki's Delivery Service. Miyazaki's deeply eco-conscious ethos comes through and reflects a strong importance in balance between human civilization and the natural world. Miyazaki uses fashion in his films to convey who the character is at a glance, such as in Princess Mononoke, with the difference between San and the clothing of the people of Iron Town. With solar punk fashion, similar sentiments can be used where clothing can convey who you are. Often based on local cultures and specific time periods, your clothing can be used to convey your culture or heritage as a celebration. Whether you would want to emulate the simplistic clothing style of the films or work for your own heritage, both would absolutely work. Going further into the regional motifs that have influenced solar punk, Afrofuturism, Amazofuturism, and indigenous fashions are all celebrations of different cultures. An issue that has arisen due to colonization and the amalgamations of different peoples has been the loss of individual cultural styles. This has happened even with European cultures, as the number of different cultures from Northern and Eastern Europe, for example, have been reduced to white. Strengthening the styles and cultures of people of color is essential to solar punk fashion, while also encouraging those lacking the melanin to look to their own cultural background. And with that, let's look at what different solar punk creators have put out there. Olivia Luis's work on Tumblr was one of the places that the aesthetic of solar punk started to truly take shape, and we're starting off with her work. Looking at these pieces, you can clearly see Art Nouveau's influences in both form and decoration. These pieces were included as a part of an overall solar punk post on her blog, which you can find in the description below. She notes that with this character art, she would trace over Art Nouveau artwork, then adapt it. In the post, she states, With energy costs at a low, I like to imagine people being more inclined to focus their expendable income on the arts. Aesthetically, my vision of solar punk is very similar to steampunk, but with electronic technology and an Art Nouveau veneer. This next piece by her is one of my favorite examples of solar punk fashion, which she has in a separate post from these first pieces. About it, she wrote, I wanted to draw the dress in the last image, but a bit different. If I was better at drawing details, I would have added some big earrings or other jewelry slash accessories, like a cool gold belt or something. I don't know. The second to last image is of a metal Art Nouveau trinket box that I scaled down and made into a phone case in my drawing. That's kind of an example of how I'd like to see art and tech come together. 
I really want to see other people draw solar punk fashion, tech, or setting sometime. Eventually, I want to do a video where I try to recreate this dress, so feel free to subscribe if you'd like to see something like that. Moving on, we'll take a quick look at a fashion designer who uses Art Nouveau and Tiffany stained glasses inspiration for her work. Linda Friesian's futuristic work uses 100% recyclable thermoplastic to create intricate line work and stunning designs. Largely focusing on bridal and couture work, her gorgeous pieces can be found on her Instagram if you're looking for more inspiration. Check down below for the links to all these creations. The Mage by Misha Haynes depicts a character in flowing loose clothes in natural green tones with gold decoration and a wonderful fancy hat. The character is called the Mage, and they come from their webcomics, The Substitutes. Next is from Connor Louisel, and this piece of art is of Kota from his Sunkeeper series. I luckily managed to get a hold of Connor, so I could get a bit more information about this depiction. About the outfit, he said, It was mostly about prominently displaying Kota's prosthetic, but I wanted something light and flowy to deal with the hot heat of the city she lives in sandals to keep her organic foot cool and dry while walking about the city, and a lovely eco-inspired necklace to show off her passion for trying to make better ways for nature and all that. We did sort of a typical sci-fi visualization of her neonet intraocular augment in the actual story world. They're not really over the eye like that, necessarily, but it was just to illustrate her smartphone is displayed over her eye via augmented reality. It is my pleasure to bring you some pieces of Hal Hefner's work on his upcoming solar punk series called The Serpent Seed. These are character designs slash concept art, and I don't want to spoil anything, so we can just enjoy. Hal has been doing some amazing work with solar punk, so stay tuned to his work for once he releases Serpent Seed. Next, we have Ko and Jaya from Penumbra by Pug Crumbs. Penumbra is a Mesoamerican solar punk epic that they've been working on for a while. When emailed about the piece, they responded, The drawing itself is more exploratory in terms of fashion. Pre-colonial Mesoamerica was vibrant and colorful, and their clothing was mostly made of cotton. These styles included in this particular piece are in no way an accurate depiction of what the people wore back then, but I was experimenting with color, looseness of the clothing, how I could modify the loincloth to be more decorative and in general convey the evolution of fashion in a solar power kingdom, governed by a cast of characters based off the civilizations of the sun, without necessarily westernizing it, though because we do not live in a vacuum, it's hard to avoid. Our next piece of solar punk fashion is by Joa Quiroz. They are a self-described solar punk, and their work is one of the most well-known examples of Amazofuturism. Their art is gorgeous, so make sure to check it out. We're going to be focusing on a few pieces specifically. Up first, we have this one. Joa states, Hey yo, this is the first of a series of illustrations I'll be posting in the coming months. It'll be about Brazilian indigenous futurism, or as I'm calling it, Amazofuturism. Hope you guys like it! Following that, we have this piece with a description of a commission made for Projecto Athene based around the concepts of agroforestry, permaculture, and solar punk. I personally love the prosthetic arm. This one has a simple description of a girl and her macaw. A large amount of their art has the theme of Amazofuturism and solar punk, so definitely check it out if you want more examples of solar punk fashion from that direction. Lastly, before we get onto my own outfits, I'll show you some other examples where we're described as solar punk. All these outfits came from what I already had in my wardrobe, for the sake of not getting anything new. I'll list where I got everything in the description if I can, some of the pieces I've had for a long time. 
I try to keep the number of pieces in my wardrobe down by having key accessories that work with a number of different outfits. With this first outfit, I'm wearing a jacket that was originally white and from my mother. I've been modifying it over the past 10 years, including hand embroidering the solar punk patches and adding glass spikes to the shoulder, which I'm going to be surrounding with embroidered moss. I based this outfit on some solar punk witch designs and thought that the resulting look gives off bumblebee vibes. The dress is from a local store and has pockets. This outfit is largely handmade by my wonderful partner Bjorn. The dress is a kirtle and the vest is a design that we made together with secondhand silk. I put this outfit on and immediately felt like a wizard. I'm also wearing stays. Featuring the pants I dyed in my last video, this pair of pants and stays outfit is meant for adventuring with a little bit of flourish. Behold! A shawl that I hand knit myself. This is one of my favorite outfits. I tried to bring in lots of color with this and have biophilic design brought in with my wing shawl. This gold outfit came from one of my favorite stores and is made from silk with tiny lines on it. The store it came from, Dancing Days, buys their clothes directly from textile workers. The shining gold made me think of the sun and I saw this gleaming from down the street when I was having a bad day. I hope that you've enjoyed this guide on solar punk fashion and that you like my outfits. Let me know which one was your favorite. I'll be doing videos in the future on more in-depth aspects of sustainable solar punk fashion, but the next video I'm looking at doing will either be connecting to nature or solar punk architecture. Let me know if there are any topics you want me to explore. Like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video, and if you want, you can support me on Patreon. I've tried to make sure everything is linked below, and have a great rest of your day!